What's going on, Confidants? It's your girl, your best friend, your big sis, the Empress here, bringing you classy with a twist, huh? <laughs> Serving all of the clink and chaos with a side of charm. <laughs> Welcome to the chalet for another show. We're not going to be in the chalet long today, but I had the opportunity to check out Tronics by Ray J, his new network. And I wanted to jump on here to see what you guys think about it. So we're going to go over a couple of the shows that are premiering on the network and drop in the comments and let me know if you'll be tuning in. Let me know if you have your subscription. I have mine. Now, whether or not I'll be renewing it is the question, <laughs> but let's get into it. Let me know what you think. I find the following video this time. Before we jump into the video, please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Consider becoming a confidant and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into the chalet for a new show. Also, if you can consider supporting the channel, I am not yet monetized. The Cash App is on the screen. Um, everything that you see on this channel, from the videos to the music, to the avatars, to the editing, to the thumbnails, everything is done by me. And uh, right now, all proceeds that you may send are going to assist my daughter, who, if you watch my video on the loss of my grandchild, recently lost her baby while she was seven months pregnant and still had to deliver. She's currently on bed rest and does have another son, my grandson, and I'm trying to help her out a little bit. So if you find it in your heart to support the channel by hitting the cash app, please know right now all proceeds are going to assist her until she can get back up on her feet. And before someone jumps in my comments talking about, oh, you begging, I am, I am, <laughs> I'm a mother. And if y'all are bold enough to provide assistance, then I'm bold enough to ask for it. Any questions? <laughs> so we're gonna continue with this video. Um, but just so you know, this video is actually a mix of two videos. It is a mix of the Tronics trailer as well as the House of Blueface trailer. And I put them together as to avoid some copyright things and just so I didn't have to play them both separate. So we're gonna continue on with the video now. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, I'm partnered with Tronics Network. They get an exclusive Blue Girls Club. They got all the seats. Let me talk. Because so I screenshot everything. Go through a divorce and yeah, all these things. So it's the tough fattest, fattest, fattest. I don't care about fine for divorce. Flavors, but I'm not know, a weak bitch. Chocolate. Then I won't pull up to what? I'm here, bitch. Nobody's coming downstairs. I'm at their building. Where you at, bitch? See, I'm about to do is right every fucking five minutes. I've been through enough toxic shit. So cheers yeah. to that. Sneaky, get the fuck the out. The whole time is at 11 o'clock. It's not at fucking whenever you want to show up. Don't fucking go there. Relax. Security. Strong, Where's security? Don't blame this shit I'm on me. Don't blame me. Please, Daddy, yeah, I'm mad now. Who the fuck ain't signing to nobody? Everybody already knows. Nigga, please, 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 please. I like to scrap like and they just see me like it's, it's I got no food. Yeah. I'ma beat a bitch up. You got the fastest, the fattest. Don't mind this shit on me, baby. Rain like red flavors, yeah. shots, Chocolate. broken glass, Vanilla. body. How? So y'all, I think I know what my problem is, right? I think my problem is that I be expecting us to want more. I be expecting us to want to produce more instead of just going with the norm and jumping on the bandwagon of everyone else. Everybody is doing Fight Central. So why is it that every network that comes out wants to do the same thing? When I'm coaching people on opening a business, right? The first thing that I tell them is, or ask them is, why do you want to open this particular business? When they tell me about the business they want to open, my first question to them is, what is it that you can do and bring to the table that nobody else is doing? 
Right now, it seems like every network that's coming out is trying to be a better version than the next at doing the same thing, producing the same thing. But why? Why? My problem is, I think I want us to change the narrative instead of always going along with the narrative. Right now, the narrative is that Fight Club 2020 is what works, it's what sells, and it's what we want. But the problem is, not all of us want it. So why not show something else? Why not, as a network, give people something else, something fun, something fun, something fun? Because <laughs> when is the last time that we're able to really just see fun on TV without there being toxicity attached to it? So the network's tagline is reality redefined. And I really don't see a lot being redefined except for the fact that I did notice that he is giving a space to the trans community to be able to have their own show. So outside of um, him having the trans shows on there that gives that community to the, the ability to showcase their talents and who they are on a network, it's the same thing as everything else. It's really Zeus 2.0. That's really what it is. The subscription rate for it is $4.99. And uh, when you log into the site, there really aren't any real episodes that are up now. I think House of Blueface has one, and that's going to be the first one that we're going to look at. But everything else is really trailers, so there really aren't any shows that are uploaded. I'm hoping that changes soon. Like, <laughs> for my $4.99, I really want more than just trailers for the first month. So I'm hoping um, more episodes are uploaded. But when you're inside the network, you're going to notice that they do have four shows that are currently either in the making or getting ready to be released but there's the inside the network and that really goes behind the scenes on the creation of the tronics network you have the fight club i keep wanting to call this show the house of blues but it's actually house of blue face and you also have going on a safari y'all safari is so fine but he is so damn toxic just so toxic so i'm not surprised he's on a toxic network so for House of Blueface, from what I'm gathering, this isn't a new show. Um, this is actually the deleted footage or the unseen footage or maybe the footage that was on OnlyFans that everyone didn't get the opportunity to see of Blue Girls Club. And this is where we were introduced to Krishan Rock and the psychotic love triangle he had or supposedly had with her and Bonnie. So if you're expecting to get a new show, this isn't a new show. This is actually Blue Girls Club deleted scenes that you'll be seeing on Tronics. Now, maybe in further seasons you'll get different girls and he's going to be continuing in the blue girls club fashion and bringing new girls into the house of blue face but for right now you're getting deleted scenes and deleted footage now i actually watched a few episodes of the blue girls club but for me i didn't understand the point of it like were they just coming out to kick it with blue face were they competing for some money because <laughs> I didn't see any money on the line in the first few episodes like I really didn't understand what the whole purpose that they were trying to achieve uh, Blue Girls Club was but if you were into it you might be into this next up we have Mangina and if you don't know who Mangina is Mangina originated on a Zeus show called One More Chance if you don't know who Chance is Chance is who I would call the prince of reality TV he and his brother Real had a show of their own called Real Chance of Love, and they actually came from the queen of reality TV show, Miss New York herself on I Love New York. So Chance was given a show on Zeus Network called One More Chance, and that's where we got Roly from. He actually gave her that name. And also, Mangina premiered on this show as well. Mangina showed up in the house, I guess looking for love from Chance. Chance wasn't feeling it, but he kept him around as kind of his informant. And so it looks like Tronix is giving Mangina the opportunity to have a show. So we're going to check out the trailer and I'd love to know what you think about it and to see if you'll be tuning in. Now it doesn't look like this particular show is finished. Um, it does not have a thumbnail like the rest. 
but it is listed as episode two in the series Inside the Network, where Ray J goes behind the scenes and shows you the making of the shows and what he had to put into it and some of the struggles, I guess, to get them launched. So this is a show that I think they're looking to call Who Loves Mangina? And we're going to check out this episode two of the Inside the Network trailer that has to do with Mangina. It has been edited by me because, of course, I do not want to drop a full episode. It is only a few minutes long. It was 17, but I think I condensed it down. So if you want to see the full episode, you will have to log into the network. Well, let's check it out. Myself. We gave all y'all niggas to talk, all right? So if y'all think he's about to pull up better than y'all, with better shows and better talent, y'all got us fucked up. Everybody deserves to win. But now that we in the game, I mean, y'all niggas about to be on the bench, nigga. Bitch on the bench, plenty of ways to get put in the game. Huh? China, like, you know, she went through that and show. So I brought, I brought Jackie in to make sure that he's gonna take care of like all of the like casting and other things as far as the actor game. So I mean, I don't know exactly what you want. I know Jackie's a little um, confused about what's happening. So I think once we get to the house, we can sit down and like, we wanna congratulate her with being a part of the network or, and they kind of make notes on what we what we want. Okay. Right, I gotta stop and get a tattoo on my face. Before we go. But I want to okay. get a tattoo, you want the tattoo about me? I want to look hardcore. Y'all ready to don't take nothing serious. <laughs> That's why I had such high hopes for the network because he's so entertaining to watch, but I still do. I'm hoping he can live up to his brand and redefine reality TV. Take it back to reality TV of old when we fell in love with it. So I get off the chin and I'm super excited to be working with Mad China. I mean, we did a good job on one more chance. So now it's time to give her a chance to find love. Because that's something that she said she really wanted. So the title is Who Loves Man China? When we get to Las Vegas, when the hell breaks loose, and instead of somebody trying to find out who loves Man China, we found out who hates Man China. This transgender woman was held in the men's unit. Charged with felony battery of law enforcement and also disorderly conduct. Corrections Department protocol, which actually mandates that transgender inmates are classified and housed based on safety needs and gender identity. She later asked a judge whether she had to stay in that unit despite being a female legally. And now I'm getting a call that man Johnny got locked up. I'm looking for you after jail. I done went to the women's section. Forget me. You know, you know what I forgot. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, man, Jane. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Flint, Michigan. The baddest bitch out here doing this shit. Y'all know the motherfucking vibe. M-A-N-G-I-N-A. Um, a lot of people think it's Gina, but it's actually Gina. Man, Gina, man, Gina. It ain't tomato, tomato. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It ain't Mangina, Mangina, it's Mangina, and that's it. When I heard the name, it just made sense, because it's like, I am, I was born guy, and I do have like a, a vagina, so it actually made sense, so I liked it the name. We're doing a, we're doing a trans girls club, we're girl, the girls club, so it's, it's the G-W-O-R-L-S club, the girls club. But I was telling them about the show that we was doing, and they, they had a lot to say, they was like, Put on hair, put on makeup, put on girl clothes, but don't live as a woman. So we're not the same. That's different. Just like a gay guy playing dress like That's not us. We're women. We say hormones. We do gay kids, we require body, and we take testosterone blockers and things of that nature to become like mwah. Press pause. So I have a question, right? So with the whole trans thing, so now you're telling me the worlds are arguing and fighting 
over who's trans and who's not trans. So are you now telling me that it's more than just an identification? It's more than how you just choose to identify. You have to actually have the hormones and the shots and the breast and the injections in order to be considered a trans woman. You have to be fully into the transitioning mode. And this is an honest question because I don't know. It seems to me that the problem on this particular show, which is another show that is in the works on Tronics Network, is what they're saying is Mangina isn't actually a trans woman. Mangina is actually a drag queen because, as they said, he is not doing anything to fully transition into a woman. So what do you guys think about that? Drop in the comments and let me know because my biggest concern is how do you want the world to understand how to identify or classify you when you guys don't even have it down pat in your own community because it sounds to me like a trans woman disrespecting another trans woman but you're asking the world to accept something that you don't accept yourself so someone please help me understand it's the same thing i say about black lives matter right you can't criticize the world for doing to you what you're doing to each other. <laughs> so, uh, like I was saying, I'm Tickle Pink. So, like I was saying, I don't need not a titty. I don't need not a surgery. I don't need anything. And I'm still better than each last one of them bitches that has something to say. The show we did one more chance. Shout out to Chin. Shout out to Jackie Long. You know, Mangina really stood out in that show. I mean, a chance to even give me a giant an opportunity it says a lot about you. There's a lot of anger in you, man. There must be truth to what man giant is saying, bad and bougie dog. Now you know what you're No, here. you get the fuck Girl, out. let me help you. No, come on. You ain't helping come shit. Come on, get her out. Yo, did I say get her out? Mm -mm. You done fucked up. Just sit down. Get her out. Girl, get on out of here. Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say you a real bitch, and everything on you is real, natural, no fake bitch, exactly, everything real. And you just right. said the answer. You just said the answer. Me being natural, being me, this how I look, bad as fuck, without any surgery. All the everybody else that's in that house had multiple surgeries. You get what I'm saying? And they still not a bad bitch. You get what I'm saying? So that equals out to what I'm saying. If I was to get surgery. Oh, bitch, call me Nicki Minaj or Beyonce. Nobody's fucking then you. Then I look over and I see these big ass teeth. The nigga look like the muse next girl, dog. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? And I just lost it. And honestly, it really didn't have nothing to do with, with Mangina personally. It was just like what I had been experiencing. So he kind of just caught like the worst of it. See, this is what I'm concerned about because of what he just said in that little segment. I think one of these shows is going to push someone so far to the point where they're going to react because of what they're dealing with. And a lot of people don't understand when a person is dealing with something, especially when you don't know what it is or how bad it's affecting them. You don't know what you're unleashing on the inside of them when you start to push. And that is my fear with these fight club networks that one day they're going to push someone too far and something bad is going to happen that they can't take back. So I have this section kind of muted out because it's, it's extremely vulgar and <laughs> I'm not playing all that on my channel, but it looks like they get into it over I'm not smashing who or whatever. But again, as he stated, it escalated because he was dealing with something. He looks like he's built like Jamie Foxx, but definitely looked like a, a Wanda. <laughs> Y'all, Wanda, Wanda is actually insane. <laughs> so I'm not sure who this fella is. But what I can tell you is Mangina is an agitator. Mangina, if you saw one more chance, you know Mangina picks with the girls, the men. He has no respect of persons. Do y'all hear me? So I'm not sure what really prompted this or how they ended up getting into it. I'm not sure if this gentleman plays for the holes on the field or if he's happier with the clubs and the balls on the field. I'm not sure but it looks like this is going to be an interesting show. Do you think you'll be watching <laughs> For the Love of Mangina? Now, please remember, this is a trans show. So from what it looks like on the screen, the girls get into it. 
So, of course, these are the girls from uh, the show that they have in the works, the Worlds Club. And I gotta be honest, little mama's in the green. I did not know she was trans. I thought biological woman. <laughs> Y'all, it's getting harder and harder to tell them apart. I, listen, if guys, if y'all out there aren't into women who are not biological, I don't know what to tell y'all. Because y'all, if y'all hear whining in the background, please do not be alarmed. I am pup sitting my grand puppy for my daughter. <laughs> And she's in the cage. She's a toy poodle. And she's whining right now because she wants attention. So don't be alarmed. She's absolutely fine. She has her toys in there with her. But she just wants Gigi's attention. <laughs> so don't be alarmed. But like I said, fellas, I, listen, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. As I stated before, and I'm going to reiterate it, you cannot criticize the world for what you're doing to each other. You just can't. Telling another trans woman that she is not a trans woman because she doesn't have hips and ass is like a biological woman with a BBL telling another biological woman that she's less of a woman because she doesn't have a BBL. It's not acceptable. If we want to be accepted for who we are, then we have to accept everybody else for who they are. And that's just period. You can't proclaim to the world, accept me for who I am. You have to accept me as I am. And then turn around and turn to those in your own community and turn your nose down to them because they don't look like you. Because they haven't had the same surgeries that you have or because they're not built like you. We really have to stop that because that's what makes you hypocritical. As a society, we have to stop putting our expectations on other people. What we decide to do for us to make ourselves feel better and look better, that's for us. But when we start turning our nose down on others because they choose the opposite, that's where the problem comes in at. On both sides of the spectrum, no one's exempt. Now next up we have Sydney Star, the transgender diva. <laughs> So I was actually introduced to Sydney on Botched. She was on an episode of Botched. I want to say she was getting her breasts done. And to be honest with you, if it wasn't for the fact that she said she was transgender, I would not have known. Now, Sydney with her own TV show, I'm completely here for it. <laughs> because if Sydney has her own show, I can guarantee you it's going to be a bunch of debauchery and absolute foolishness. <laughs> but I can guarantee you it's going to be entertaining because Sydney Star is an entertainer. She is absolutely hilarious. So if they are giving her her own show on Tronics, I promise you I'm here for it. I promise you. Let's check out the trailer for the new show. Sydney Star. Sydney Star is a transgender entertainer and reality TV personality. She's known for her appearances on shows like Love and Hip Hop Music and Baddies. She's been an influential figure within the transgender community, using her platform to raise awareness, and she's been an advocate for transgender rights. She's come to the Tronics Network to do a love show because she's looking for love. We want to have auditions. We want to have them the right way. She insists on doing it her way in Atlanta with her team without proper planning without the proper professional people there and without our consent. And I'm going to keep it real. If you don't plan to win, you plan to fail. Yeah. The hate when you elevate. The second of losses, I'm handing them out. Yeah, I had to go delegate. You feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment. I swear I could levitate. They never believed that I would really fly. I had to go demonstrate. I had to set them straight. They hate when you elevate. Elevate, elevate. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The line is around the corner. Like, it's so unbelievable. Like, I'm, this is the day I never thought would come. And I gotta, I gotta really show out. And this ain't really just 
about, you know, Ray J wanting me to do this. This is for me. Because in a minute, if we keep doing it like we doing it, with the power that I gave some of these motherfuckers, they gonna run it into the ground. And I will not allow it. I will not allow fuckery at the highest level. This shit need to wait for a second. Shit is not set up. We, How is we're it? in Atlanta, the home of the gays. Like, exactly. we, ain't nobody finna do nothing like that for real. Like, I mean, Sydney demanded to do the auditions without our help, without our support, and without our structure. I'm not trying to rain on your parade, any of that, but everybody has to be safe. Like, security has to be on deck. Because at the end of the day, a motherfucker running We're in here. Atlanta. What? Go. We're what? talking about trans girls and gang guys. What is the worst that could happen? Child, you think we finna go to the Bronx in New York? Yeah. With the hood niggas. We're gone. I almost drowned it. Almost drowned. I can't swim it down. Yeah, I'm way too fired up. I can't swim it down. Bachelors. Make sure the fashion right. Yeah, I'm in my bed tonight. Damn, man. You're, you are you really don't have no respect. You know what I'm saying? It's homie from back to back. It's just, I, I told. Crystal, you just try to stay. Just you just try to stay. Try to stay right and don't have no correct. That's yeah, neutral, but not even that. Yeah, because you already had your moments where you went in. I don't think mean. you need to go in anymore. If you want to, it's just and that, crazy. And this is what I was telling. I, but but, I but it's control. Because when I heard what happened, I thought she was hurt. No, and then that's why I was like, damn, this shit. I figured out that was work. I'm not playing these games. I might get active again today. I don't know. Nah, girl, because that union, that shit. shit. <laughs> nah, she'll come right out, that's fine. All right, we are tracking this breaking news right now. Our newsroom closely monitoring an active shooting situation Man. out of Atlanta. And just minutes Nothing later. like that happens here at yeah. all. None of that shit. I've never, out of all the times I've been in Atlanta, I've never experienced yeah. a shooting. I've never experienced nothing. Not even amongst the straight. You're in or the, the heterosexual world. I told you. You said, I don't oh, know. It's going to be good. Oh, it's going to be good. I can see that put, that put the motherfucking gun in the bitch hand and she shot fucking 10 times. My energy did that for sure. No, it was more My than 10 energy. times. It was more It was more oh. like 17 or 18 oh, times. Oh, was it? Yeah. Your community. Yeah. Your community. <laughs> it's fucking joke, for real. No, no. Nah, it's not. It's not. Somebody's probably dead right now, and I don't even fucking know. It. And we just sitting here kicking, kicking like nothing happened. Motherfuckers shot seventeen fucking times at my motherfucking audition, and you sitting here just like it's nothing. Ain't nobody popped up there. This, this, this is not. Ain't nobody popped up there. That's what people say. Ain't nobody popped up there. I can't. Ain't nobody popped up there. I can't. I can't. Get the fuck out of my room. No, I'm, I'm done. done. No, I'm done. Get, no, get the fuck out. You can get the fuck out. You can get your shit. Yeah. That ain't what I signed up for. Child. <laughs> I think they're getting wicked on Sydney's show. Now, I'm really not surprised if something like this happened on the show that Sydney did by herself because one thing that I think has hindered Sydney all this time is that she doesn't listen, like, at all. Every show that she's on, she wants to do everything her way and not take any suggestions from anyone. And no one has made it anywhere in life. I don't care what you're doing without learning from someone, even if it's just someone that you paid attention to and it wasn't just hands-on. So... I can see something out of order and something wicked like this happening at something that Sydney tried to put together herself. Because a lot of times Sydney does too much. <laughs> she does. But that's also what makes her entertaining is because she does so much. But the problem is she goes too far with it. Like sometimes she just goes too far and if this actually happened where shots were fired and someone could have potentially been injured yeah that's a bit much but i think i still want to check it out to see what happens so the next show up is the fight club and i'm not going to show any video footage 
or any trailers from this because you guys already know that I don't showcase content like this any longer. And if you are new to the channel, hi, I'm the Empress and we do not showcase content over here that exhibits violence for no damn reason at all. <laughs> so I'm not going to show any footage, but if I could describe it to you, I would have to say it is baddies mixed with South Central baddies like 12.0 it's for real like i saw broken fingers and you know what i'm I, here's what i don't understand right if you want to showcase their fighting skills then do it right that's all i'm saying stop shortchanging these girls because you're paying them to be entertainers not fighters that's a whole different arena and if you want them to enter it then you need to provide a different pay for it Otherwise, you're getting two for one and they're getting shortchanged. And I don't understand why. I don't understand why these girls don't get it. But, but then again, I do. I do because whenever you never had money, some money is better than no money. And some people will do anything to get it. That's the problem. Boxers are not paid to be entertainers. They're paid to be boxers. But boxing is entertaining. MMA fighters and UFC fighters, these are not entertainers. These are fighters, real fighters, not storyline actors with some set up scene direction and fake drama. When they come to the ring, they're not coming to be cute. They're coming to wreck some. And because we love and are entertained by brutality, people pay to see it. On these fight shows, you're paid to be cute and have drama while you're doing it, but you keep giving fighting for free. Entertainment means not real, hence why we have WWE, but you're giving real life at an entertaining price. Come on, y'all. But the heads at the top are getting paid for both because that's why people are tuning in because for $4.99, they're getting two for one on one show. The problem is these shows aren't playing out. You can tell they're just winging it, just ready, set, go, do something. <laughs> but here's an idea, since we just have to see fighting, right? Here's an idea. Create a series, right? Call it Baddie Wars. And I know somebody is going to say, don't release your ideas. Y'all listen, <laughs> I don't have the money to produce it right now. So maybe somebody will see it and want to produce it and make me an assistant producer <laughs> because I have so many ideas, but call it Batty Wars. And in Batty Wars, they're competing for ultimate baddie, which is the top, baddest baddie, which is second place, and baddie, which will be third place. Have them competing for $100,000 and the opportunity to work with one of the top image consultants in the business and a spot on the next season of baddies or another show that's in the making, right? If they fight, like fight each other and it's not a part of the competition, then remove money from the pot, remove money from the $100,000 and then the winner will only get what's remaining. So that'll give them an extra incentive not to fight each other because you don't want your winnings to be shorted because the other girls couldn't get along. So then you're going to see real leaders step up in the house because they want to protect the bag, right? Have several different competitions and <laughs> elimination matches with real challenges like swimming challenges with puzzles to complete and obstacle courses to get through with the final battle being a, back, a boxing match with gloves and a helmet to determine who the ultimate and the baddest baddies are come on now y'all have watched american ninja warrior everybody is into those show shows make it entertaining make it something that people not only want to come back to watch for more but make people want to really get onto it because right now the only people that you're getting on baddies and these fight club shows are girls that want to fight but not any real baddies that have real substance they're not going to jump on there because they're not going to ruin their brand by fighting someone and potentially messing up their face or messing up their body just to get your version of the bag when you're making the most money. You could even make each episode a different part of the competition. Make them timed events or the first to complete the event. And that's how you progress to the next level of the competition. The slowest or the last one is eliminated. Like y'all, come on now, y'all seen how these game shows go. 
You could also do a talent competition in it and call it She's Gifted. Each contestant will have to showcase their talent, but they'll have to prepare it themselves. So like if you're a performer, right, you have to put together a whole performance with costume and all, background, backdrop, everything put together with the works to showcase your talent as a performer. If you're a hairstylist, turn styling hair into a performance, like make it creative. If you're a manager or a promoter or a producer, as some of these girls say, then put together a performance for your best artist and showcase them so people can see what you're producing and promoting and managerial skills are like. What kind of artist you're bringing out, right? Show something that shows your creativity as a baddie. Have some guest judges who are bloggers, because I mean, let's be honest, it's the bloggers that bring the most attention to these networks and to these shows. So your judges, let them be bloggers. When the girls aren't actually competing or guys or whoever you're using, then show them in the house working towards their goals and give points for that person that accomplishes the most goals in the house. Make them the top house baddie and guarantee them a spot in house A or something. I don't know. <laughs> so, and also show it during the episode of the competition. So you're able to see the actual competition of them competing for ultimate baddie on the stage. And you also show them in the house trying to accomplish their goals and also competing for ultimate baddie. And let those points add up towards the ultimate baddie title. Like, y'all get make it entertainment give people something to want to come back to make them want to run back to it or make that particular competition a, a lip sync battle and have them put together performances and then give them a theme prior to the competition like 90s or rock or whatever the theme is going to be for that particular segment of the competition do something to make the people want to come back for more give them something to talk about other than just the ability to fight let these girls show who they really are let let the world see them in another light let them see who they really are on these shows you can even start from there and branch off you can have plus size baddies and and a name for the guys like all these different competitions that people are going to want to be on because it's not just about fighting hence more people are going to want to subscribe hence you're going to draw in people from other cultures hence you're going to draw in viewers from other cultures but you got to give the people something that they want instead of all of this hood ghetto trifling shit like just standing around fighting and you not making no money but here's the problem with it though, right? The networks are gonna have to come up off some cash in order to do it because you know all of your contestants aren't gonna have money. And if you want it to be top tier and watchable and make people wanna tune in, then you're gonna have to come up off some money and make sure that everything looks top tier when the contestants come out. I think it's absolutely insane. Insane that these networks take these girls out of the country on these shows and they have to pay their own way to get there. That's insane, especially with all of the money that these networks are making. That's like you hiring me for a job and I have to pay you to get there because I'm the one losing money and you're making it. It's like, how does it even make sense? put some coinage behind this stuff and make it entertaining if you just want to see fighting all right all right i'll give you that then create a show and call it social coliseum or something like that and schedule boxing matches between top social media stars who are into it that just want to get in the ring and box it out let it specifically be for social media stars let them have their boxing outfits and let them box it out in the ring with the gloves and the helmet on, people are still gonna watch because it's gonna be the top social media stars. They're gonna wanna see who's gonna win, who's gonna be the best. You can even have them do tag team boxing matches and make it entertaining for men and women. Give the people something to want to come running back for more for. There's so many other ways to offer entertaining fighting without seeing girls bleeding and black eyes and hair pulled out for views where the only people seeing real money are the owners. Come on, y'all do it the right way. Now, next up we have going on a safari and this is featuring Safari himself and it is a dating show. Now, originally when I saw that he was gonna have a dating show on here, 
I was thinking, okay, this is going to be interesting because we all know Safari is a hoe. <laughs> so I don't think Safari is trying to find love at all. Maybe another play toy, but I don't think Safari is trying to find love. But the interesting thing is when I saw this, I thought it was going to take us back to old reality TV like Flavor of Love when Flay was looking for love and it wasn't even though there was drama, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't about all of this fighting until I saw the preview for the actual network and it showed clips from Safari's show and it looks like it's Fight Club Central too, like y'all. <laughs> I'm just hoping that's not what it is, but it is Safari, so <laughs> we never know. Um, so my overall thoughts of the network, right? I don't know. I don't know. There are some good shows that I think I want to watch. Sydney Star Show being one. I do want to see Safari Show to see how it is. Um, I do want to watch Ray J's Behind the Scenes just to see how he put the network together. So it does have some promising shows that are going to be coming out. Like I said before, there aren't any real shows released yet. There is one or two episodes of The Inside Look, but they're not really long. They're maybe like 15 minutes. You know, they're all different lengths, as well as the House of Blueface does have one episode on there. But again, like I said, episode one is just clips. So I don't know. I don't know when the shows are really launching so that there will be more of a variety on the, on the network. But I'm really hoping that Ray J really brings it. I really am. So that's all I have for this one. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe if you like the video. Consider becoming a confidant and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into the chalet for another show. Um, consider supporting the channel and hitting that cash app. Like I said in the beginning, all proceeds right now are going to assist my daughter who just recently lost my grandbaby um, who passed away while she was pregnant. So all proceeds are going to her if you consider supporting. And thank you for joining me in the chalet. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.